awesome sauce? Scene one, Apple, take one. When I was a kid, you could go to the mall. It didn't really even matter what mall it was. And as soon as you walked in, you could always smell the food that they had at the snack bars. But you could smell the food of the mall. You could smell the pizzas, you could smell the hot dogs, you know. And the one thing that I remember smelling a lot were the pretzels. And they had things like Hot Sam, that was one. Wetzel's pretzels, that was, I think, 80s and up. But Hot Sam was one that I really remember. And in this video, I'm going to be making basically a Hot Sam pretzel, okay? Or a Wetzel's pretzel or a mall pretzel. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be putting in some yeast. I'm going to be putting in what's equivalent to maybe uh, a packet of yeast, okay? We want a little bit of salt, not a lot, okay? This is maybe half a teaspoon. We need some sugar, so I'm going to be putting two spoonfuls of sugar. Now you can use vegetable oil if you want to, or olive oil or any type of oil that you want really, um, but I'm going to be using butter. It doesn't have to be fully melted just softened so it'll mix okay but we want a buttery flavor right so we're going to end up adding that plus this is going to also help the uh, pretzel darken a little bit that was almost a cup of water I'm gonna probably have to ha at least add two cups of flour put that in there we'll also end up putting in our butter make sure that the butter isn't hot okay if it's hot it might kill the yeast and we don't want that all right, so let's go ahead and mix this up and see if we're going to have to add more flour, which we probably will. Probably going to need more than that, so I'm going to add maybe like another half a cup. This consistency right here is good, but you're going to see that it tears. So what we have to do is we have to build up the gluten in it, and we're going to do that by kneading. So we'll just let this um, knead for about eight minutes. Okay, so I went ahead and I was... Uh, I finished the kneading of that and the um, texture of it you're going to see much stretchier okay and this is a nice texture right here and um, there's enough fat in it I don't think I need to oil the bowl any but um, you can always put some uh, spray nonstick spray around there um, but we're going to take some plastic wrap we're going to cover this and we are going to let this double in size we're going to let it prove so I'm going to go ahead and get something ready here because um, the dough is almost ready for us to start shaping. But um, what I want to do is I want to uh, prep some water. We need to boil these in uh, for a short time. And generally pretzels will end up getting uh, dipped in some type of lye solution, L-Y-E, lye solution. Um, you can get food grade lye. Um, but what's cheaper and safer is if you just end up making your own base with uh, baking soda. So. Uh, I've got some water here, and I'm going to be putting about that much, uh, maybe a half a cup of baking soda in that water. And uh, we're going to go ahead and let this uh, come to a boil. Okay, so we've got our dough here. Depending on the size of the pretzel that you want, um, I'm going to just go ahead and kind of grab about this much right here. And um, because of the amount of oil that is inside this, I'm not going to really need um, to put any flour down, okay? But what we want to do is we want to roll these outward, almost like we're making rolls except very thin rolls, okay? And you're going to see that um, because of the gluten that we had created, um, it's going to want to uh, keep stretching back. Okay, so what we can do is, is grab up here Give it a twist, a twist, flip it over, bada boom, bada bing, and there will be our first pretzel. And now what we need to do is we need to take this and, and put it on a piece of parchment. Okay, so this is part one. Turning the uh, oven on to 450 degrees. We need to get that nice and hot inside there. And uh, what we can do from here
So if we let these uh, proof up a little bit, you'll see that any marks that I had made with the um, tongs will end up kind of disappearing. Um, this one kind of got torn up a little bit. It's okay, it's going to taste the same. And we're going to take an egg. You can also add a little milk to this if you want to. And by doing so, this will end up making it where it becomes very dark on top, as well as it acts like a glue for the salt. Now at this point is when you'd put your pretzel salt on there. I, I don't have any pretzel salt. And you have to be really careful about using something like table salt because it's just too small, it'd be easy to overdo it. But what I have here is, um, damn there, the same thing as pretzel salt. This is Hawaiian sea salt. Now I'm gonna be transferring those to a different uh, piece of paper so the um, egg doesn't overcook and burn. Okay, so these go into 450 degree oven. It's probably going to take about anywhere from 10 to 18 minutes depending. So right around 10 minutes, 12 minutes, check them. Keep watching them and, and look at them. Uh, you don't want to overcook them. Right around 11 minutes and mine look like they're finished. So this is what we got. Okay. Now these pretzels are really hot and the good looking pretzel I'm going to save for my wife. Look at how hot that is but that is super soft. That is super soft. I have celiac disease so I'm not supposed to have this okay but I'm gonna take a small piece of this and uh, try it um, just to let you know if it tastes like a pretzel. I'm gonna have to try a little bit more. Yeah, that's really good. That little bit of flour is probably gonna screw me up, but I had a taste. I needed to know. There you go, guys. There you go. That's one of the softest pretzels you're ever gonna get a hold of. But that's that, guys. How to make mall pretzels. How to make hot Sam pretzels. How to make Wetzel's pretzels. How to make Auntie Anne's pretzels. How to make Mr. Pretzel. I don't even know if they have Mr. Pretzel anymore. Oh, and if you like this recipe, be sure to check out my other ones on www.drchillskitchen.com.